Yes, yes, the people, welcome back to a brand new video. Have you heard of Topshop? Right off the bat, serious question. Because if you have not, there's a very good reason for that and I will let you know as to why. I'm gonna tell you about a man, a British man who decided to steal from the British people. Bit of an experimental video, so please let me know what you think about this more investigative kind of content. The UK itself, like every other country on earth, has the handful of assholes who give British people a bad name. Today we're looking at one very specific such person, a very specific man, probably one of the worst distinct men in the UK business, Sir Philip Green. And point out, he has a Sir in front of his name. That'll come back later. So who is he? Who is Philip Green? I'll tell you. He was the owner of a company called Topshop. And if any of you haven't heard about Topshop before, well, that means you must be super young. Topshop lived under the parent company Arcadia Group Limited. And it was previously known as the Burton Group, which goes way back to the 1960s, where the UK fashion scene was about to become a stunning, vibrant center point for the whole world. True story. A shop called Gear. And you're never too young for in-gear, until you're old enough to say so anyway. What started as a small store in a mini plaza very quickly became a large place to be in London. If that goes, to, you know, Topshop, I love Topshop, even though I'm obviously not of the age group. I think they set the trends for the online shopping. A different person by the name Rolf Halpern was the original owner of the Burton Group. The bottom line is he had to step down and remove himself from the Burton Group due to a lot of scandals revolving his personal life, his bad conduct, etc. And guess who took his place? Your boy, Philip Green. Message for better, you not understand. Hang on, go hang on, away. hang on, There's no Just need for go any away. We're asking you questions. Philip was born on the 15th of March 1952 in Croydon. Lucky for him, he was kind of born into a wealthy family and attended private schools. So he learned a lot about business from a very early age. Despite the advantages he had in life, he did have to actually work hard and manage to get his way up to being a legit independent businessman. He also had a wife who supported him in mingling with A-lister celebrities and many others alike. Celebrities of the big kind, such as Simon Cowell from The X Factor, Rod Stewart, Beyonce, Kate Moss, and BBC Radio Faces. It's got to be sexy, it's got to be edgy. You can relate to Kate Moss wearing that. He was the future big and then a not at all force of High Street. In his older age, he was a conservative man, living off his brick Nokia phone with buttons and openly admitting that he doesn't do internet. These traditional stuck in the past ways will be important later because they factor into his demise. Some say he was always a bit of a big player. For example, in the early 2000s, Philip Green bought BHS, or its full name, British Home Stores, for 200 million pounds. Just a casual 200 million pounds, you know, just like some pocket change right there. I'll buy this. Thank you. He managed to demonstrate his skills by turning over a large profit. So good for him. He clearly was good at business. But the company's ultimate and inevitable demise ended up with 20,000 people losing their jobs and 11,000 people losing their pensions. That sucks. The collapse of BHS wasn't just the loss of 11,000 jobs. It also triggered one of the biggest corporate scandals in recent years. Arcadia says it's been looking at contingency options for the future of its brands. But tonight, that future is looking more uncertain than ever. Leaving a £500 million pension deficit after he'd sold the chain for just a pound. Something which was happening at a time where Philip Green was enjoying his new £100 million yacht on holiday. Wonderful. If I said yacht wrong, I don't care. That's just how I say it. You think when we're going to be rich and famous, we're going to buy yachts? No? Why? Why not? It was in 2002 when Philip took over Topshop. And boy, did he bring some changes. By 2005, Topshop was conducting fashion walks with its own products. Something that wasn't done during that time. He actually invented a new line of business. Because of this, celebrities from abroad would actually come into the UK and shop at Topshop. However, it soon faced issues in 2010 when the democratization and rise of online shopping came hitting him like a brick. I'm not a computer man, I'm not an internet man myself, 
or email man. I'm a man who likes to see people. Describe the brand in Twitter terms. Give us the hashtag. I don't know about all of that. This is not what I do. I've got a team that do all of that. Um, Something which Green simply did not understand or, for that matter, didn't want to. Anything digital, anything modern, he was just blatantly against. So I think, you know, you have to counterbalance the different things. Well, no, it's a business where we don't want to run shops for a loss, as you pointed out. Why would we want to do that? So on the basis we have a chance to get out of them, um, we'd obviously close them. Phil at this point, right? Phil did the unthinkable. In March 2015, Philip Green sold BHS to Dominic Chappelle, a former small-time race driver and a man with zero retail experience for a literal uno pounds. That's right, he sold a multi-million dollar company for one pound. But like, what can you even buy for a pound? Let's, let's go back to 2015, we can all remember that. What could you buy for a pound? Like, I this for a pound back then. Could you? This completely affected the faith of 11,000 staff members who lost their pensions overnight. Kind of. We'll get into that. The stressful thing is that this is just an obvious bad business move, right? I'm not dumb, right? Selling a huge, bankrupt almost company for actual nothing sounds a bit shady. And let's look into that. We were stitched up. This was a, a, a company that was in far worse shape when we got into it. Philip did not stand good on his promises. That is a, a fact of life. So I've not done anything wrong, per se, apart from owing money. I've not stolen money from the company misuse the company uh, administration for my own gains. It's purely that, you know. Bit of quick context about this 52-year-old dude, Chappelle. He ultimately appeared in the City of London Magistrates Court to face three separate charges of cheating the public out of revenue and two counts of money laundering relating to his bankrupt finance company, Swiss Rock Limited. Let's explain and look into the point of selling this for one pound. The idea was that Philip Green needed to rid himself of all debt and liability associated with the failing British home store. And a quick fix was to just completely sell off the company, basically washing his hands clean. It was around 2016 when BHS completely collapsed. The end of nearly a century of BHS and the finale was depressing. Bare shelves and empty spaces, all that's left of what was once a high street giant. It's closing time for the last time at this store in St Albans. It's been here for 44 years. British home stores have been on UK high streets since 1928. And the selling of the company wasn't just something that happened overnight though. Let's keep this in mind, you don't just sell a company overnight. According to some financial sources, BHS had lost over 800,000 customers in the previous months due to its demise, due to the rising competition from Primark, H&M, and of course, Argos, and even more, of course, online shopping. Again, really important to adapt to modern business methods. But what about the deficit for the 20,000 pensioners? What happened with them? Would Philip eventually contribute to these owed pensions for the people, for the staff? Would he put some money that he made out of his profits back into the pension pot? Well, eventually, yes. He did end up paying 400 million of his own personal money back into the debt pot. But obviously, this is because he had no choice, not out of some sense of remorse or responsibility. It was purely to avoid any sort of serious charges or any allegations that would have completely destroyed his stellar A-lister buddy public eye-seeing sir-like reputation. Lucky for us, that happened anyway. And since 2018, Sir Philip Green has basically disappeared off the face of the earth. When confronted by loads of journalists across the board at the time when all this madness was happening, he can be seen shouting at them to go away, to leave him alone. Turns out that he's not a total fan of the spotlight after all. Am I right? Which bit are you not understanding? Hang on, go hang on, away. hang on, hang on. There's no Just need for go away. It's only when it's on his side that he loves the camera. Look at him. A real life sir. In the next video, we'll be probably exploring how some of these people got their sirs and lords titles because honestly, how do you get them? How do you end up being a sir when this is the kind of stuff you do to the British public that allegedly crowns you with that title? Sir Philip, people want to know 
why you're on holiday when they think that you're supposed to be sorting out the pension deficit. Will you go away? There were calls from the public, demands actually, that he be stripped of his knighthood. He did go before court and he did plea his case. MPs did actually vote for his knighthood to be completely withdrawn. And it should have been. But as it turns out, this was just a spectacle. They said they're gonna do something, but ultimately they didn't. Because today, Philip Green is still very much, still a sir, still rocking off life in Monte Carlo or whatever on one of his many yachts. What a twat. But if you've enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments. A little bit experimental, a little bit more investigative, and what our passion actually is here on the team. If you like more on this, let me know gently in the comments and we'll try to look up cooler subjects or you can just pitch us topics in the comments and we'll do it. If you haven't done so already, press the subscribe button right now and then the bell thing to get notifications when we upload something new and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, for all your support, and we'll see you next time. Ladies!